Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the Sunday garden question and answer video that I do most uh, Sundays of the month. The first Sunday of the month is Subscriber Sunday where subscribers send in photos of things in their yard that they're proud of. You can send in photos to this email address right here. Last week was Subscriber Sunday, so it'll be the uh, first week, uh, the first Sunday in November before the next one. I just collect the photos all month and then they go in a video the first Sunday of the month. Like I say, the rest of the Sundays I do uh, question and answer videos. You can ask gardening questions down below this video and I'll select from those for uh, next week. Uh, let's see, uh, just a quick update on the uh, channel. I did Subscriber Sunday went up last Sunday. At that point, I was actually already on the road. I was in Athens, Georgia for four days. I shot videos with uh, uh, Dr. Michael Durr and I shot videos with Dr. Alan Armitage. Um, I toured the state. Um, um, Georgia Botanical Garden and several private gardens and I'll, I'll have some videos uh, from those things uh, coming up but um, I got to kind of thank you guys uh, you know your attention um, you know watching these videos and being subscribed to this channel uh, I, I now get invited to things that I never thought I you know might might be invited to or you know um, and, and meeting you know people who are just kind of legends and horticulture and that kind of thing and it's just you know um, you know, kind of, kind of, kind of amazing, kind of amazing for me. I mean, people whose books have been on my shelves, um, you know, for 30 years, you know, that I got to meet, uh, this past week was, uh, was, was quite a thrill. And like I say, it's really, um, based on you guys, um, you know, your participation in the channel, uh, that has opened, uh, opened some of those doors, uh, for me. So, uh, thank you very much. The channel should go over a hundred thousand subscribers before you guys see the next question and answer video. I've been getting about a thousand a week. I think it's about 700. Uh, 800 away from from reaching that at this point so i'll have some sort of giveaway uh next weekend for that and probably well, plantsbymail.com thing i've got and i've got some plants coming from them in the mail tomorrow uh things for containers this week i'm going to do how to plant pansies um several other uh just super not basic i don't want to call them basic but um some videos just on some how to how to things for the uh, fall that i'm doing uh in the yard those videos will start going up tomorrow so let's start uh let's get some let's get to work on some of the uh, questions um that i got from last week and others that i collected uh on the channel uh oh, one additional reminder that corona tools um has that uh uh, uh discount code horttube 15 just use all caps on horttube um somebody uh i was having an issue with it and i think that's probably what it was um you get 15 percent off on corona's website now and free shipping and that, that's just a permanent discount um, they did for uh, you guys that watch the channel okay um so here's some of the questions uh number one some i got a lot of questions about interior thinning on evergreens uh this time of year like right in the lower part of an evergreen like this privet is an evergreen shrub or a conifer you know something some, some sort of needled uh plant like a blue point juniper or something like that Lots of questions about thinning, and I'll see this time of year, you know, evergreen shrubs, uh, the, this Laura Petalum right here with the purple foliage, it's got some red leaves uh, down here in the bottom of it. It's completely normal. I mean, evergreen plants do some shedding. Tends to be dry in the fall. It's been a little wet here recently, but it tends to be a little dry in the fall, and you'll get some interior thinning to compensate for that. Conifers almost always do some lower interior thinning uh, this time of year. It's not that... It's not really anything to worry about, but you do want to be checking uh, that you're you know, continuing to water. The air tends to be drier, uh, and we can go kind of prolonged periods of time in the fall without rain. Although, it doesn't seem, doesn't seem like that right now, but uh, normally in October it can be dry. So be checking for that, but that's, that, that's, that's what it is, and it's just not that big of a deal. Uh, evergreen plants shed as well. Uh, they just don't shed everything. So there were a lot of comments from the October checklist video about the um, what looked like cabbage moths floating around behind me. I had mentioned cabbage moths in that uh, video. They're little white moths, uh, and I still have them around here. I keep my uh, broccoli and Brussels sprouts and kale and stuff covered uh, this time of year while I'm trying to grow them with a, uh, a frost protection blanket just because uh, they do significant damage to those. But there were, there were all these fluttering around me, behind me during that video those weren't actually cabbage moths those were um the uh cloudless sulfur uh butterflies those yellow butterflies and there's been just an enormous amount of them this year um they've been a lot of fun uh to watch but i've had 
as many as eight and 10 out here uh, at the time because I've still got so much color uh, back there. But those are what those are, those yellow butterflies you see for several weeks typically uh, in the fall here is a cloudless sulfur. Okay, so somebody asked me about digging up their dahlias in zone 7B, whether they needed to or not. I've got all my dahlias over here are in bloom. If you follow me on Instagram, um, I put up photos of them yesterday and we've had a great fall for, for dahlias right now. They like these cool temperatures. They tend to, they tend to kind of come back around and give new life here uh, in the fall. Uh, uh, I don't, I'm in zone 7B and I, and I don't dig them. You can use a, in, in zone 7, you can just get away, in, in 8, you can get away with just a thick layer of mulch typically uh, on them. Um, other people where it's, where it's colder than that uh, obviously are digging, are, are digging them out. But uh, uh, I did those from seed and I'm hope, you know, hopeful they'll come back, but I'm not that worried about it. I'm just going to do, I'm going to do some more from seed anyway. Uh, let's see. Somebody asked me about using soiled wood chips from a chicken coop uh, in their garden. And I think that's totally fine uh, to use your wood chips that have been soiled in your chicken coop. Just don't keep putting them in the same place. Uh, that, that's that's kind of key with those uh, manure manure based things that you would be adding to the garden. Uh, just use it, keep, continually use it in a different place in the yard so you don't build up metals uh, and you know, um, you don't build up minerals uh, that are uh, in the poop uh, in the same exact spot over and over and over again. So, but yes, it'll work fine. Just distribute it widely. Uh, let's see. Somebody talked about their rosemary thinning uh, after uh, lots of rain. And so, you know, rosemary's not fond of uh, thinning from the interior. Rosemary's not fond of water for sure, but typically interior thinning on a plant, this type of thinning that I'm talking about with this Laura Petalum where you get the red leaves down in the bottom of it. Typically that type of thinning is due to a lack of water. And so my guess is, is that your rosemary, and this happens a lot, your rosemary um, got too much water, okay? And that caused some root damage. And then uh, because it had some root damage, it actually can't bring water up to the top and it's actually dry. And I know that seems, seems weird, but I, I think pl the way plants die, especially in a nursery setting when I was growing plants, uh, they actually wilt um, because the roots got damaged on them. And so initially they were too wet that caused root damage, and then the thing just flat out couldn't bring water up to the top, and it actually died of a lack of water. So um, that's the way that uh, that's the way that actually works. So I think if you see if you see interior thinning on something, usually that means it was it was dry, um, um, but it could it could have happened because of root damage um, that was taking place, and that can be through planting, that can be through overwatering, that can be you know lots of different things can happen to the roots that don't allow them to put water up to the top. Anytime I see that kind of thing, I'm going to do a little bit of pruning on the top. I would actually like to have pruned this Laura Petalum here a little bit more toward the end of the season. It's, it's gotten a little tall on me. A little top pruning uh, on that plant would uh, probably prevent it from losing this foliage down at the bottom. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, oh, somebody asked me if I'd have a video about the cattle fence panels. Uh, that I have over here. I put, put up my uh, weekly uh, landscape video last week and put lettuce in over there. And I've got those cattle panels I'm using to grow peas and I had tomatoes on them all season. I don't have a specific video on it, but those cattle panels are available at any farm store uh, that you go to. Typically they're 16 feet long, so you need a full-size pickup and you can bend them around to bring them home uh, in a full-size pickup, meaning an eight-foot bed. Uh, and those uh, panels I just cut in half. And so they're eight foot what they're eight foot panels, and I think they're 50 inches high. And uh, I just pounded two metal poles down in the ground. They happen to be the top rail from a chain link fence, uh, and then zip tied them to them. I mean, it's really quite a, quite a simple little uh, thing over there. And I'm just going to leave them standing. I've got peas planted over there now to grow on them. And uh, in the sum next summer again, I'll have either cucumbers or tomatoes uh, growing on them during the summer. Uh, they're not inexpensive, but they last forever. So you get what you pay for. If you buy cheap tomato cages, you're going to be disposing of them occasionally, whereas that cattle fencing will last a long, long time. Okay, um, somebody asked about, okay, so I had mentioned, I've mentioned this several times, I don't like to plant, the fall is a great time for planting most things. I don't like to, I tend not to like to plant 
uh, grasses and some marginal things that uh, go completely dormant, like salvia that's barely hardy here. I wouldn't want to plant it this time of year because it'll rot in the ground. Somebody had taken that to mean like all things that go dormant, like deciduous plants, like a like uh, let's say a forsythia or a, a lilac or something like that that loses its leaves completely. No, not at all. I definitely plant those things. I'm only talking about things that literally the top of the plant dies completely to the ground. Um, even then, a lot of that stuff will be fine. Like hostas are super cold hardy and you know, uh, day lilies would be fine. So even most of that stuff would be. The only thing I don't like to plant this time of year are, like I say, perennial grasses that die all the way to the ground and then marginal herbaceous perennials. And like I say, again, salvia is a good example of that. There are lots of salvias that are only hardy to zone seven and I'm in zone seven. And I, if I, I, I find that if I plant them too late into October, November, frequently they rot in the winter time and don't come back the following spring. But any of your shrubbery that goes dormant or loses its leaves, plant it away. It's the best time of year to plant them, uh, for sure. So I don't, I don't want any kind of misunder, uh, misunderstanding there. I'm only talking about things that die completely to the ground that are semi-hardy in your area. Okay. All right, the last uh, thing I'll get to, I'm planting uh, pansies um, this week. I'm creating some, creating some new annual beds in the front, and I'm actually about to plant whatever tree I'm going to plant out here. I think it's going to be a service berry in the front yard, several other projects out there. But I get um, questions about when, you know, when to plant certain things from vegetables to pansies or whatever it is. And I, I've used this soil thermometer in the past. I, most of you watching me now have subscribed to this channel um, in the last year. More than half of the people who are subscribed to the channel have actually subscribed in the last 12 months. And you've probably never seen me use a soil thermometer. And I tend to forget sometimes that, you know, there's some... Uh, just some basics, uh, things that I need to remind folks of occasionally. Uh, pansies like the soil temperature between 45 and 65. And so it's easy to take a very inexpensive soil thermometer like this and find out what the soil temperature is. And so I wait until the soil temperature is near 65 degrees, maybe 68 is fine. Uh, and I, that's when I plant my uh, pansies. Uh, for my tomatoes and cucumbers, it's starting to rain. Tomatoes, cucumbers, peppers, they like the soil temperature above 70. So in the spring and, you know, in mid to late April, I can stick this thing in the ground. If soil temperature is near 70, I go for it. Uh, things, um, things like broccoli and, um, let me see, Brussels sprouts. Uh, there are, uh, there's a group of vegetables that actually like it just above 60. Broccoli is included in that. They don't, it, broccoli is a cool season vegetable, but there's a limit to that. Once the soil temperature gets below 60, it, it's not all that happy. Um, and then there's a group of things between like 40 and 60, and that's going to be lettuce and arugula and uh, beets. Uh, there's a lot of things that like it in that range. And so this soil thermometer is an easy, inexpensive way to just, you know, confirm what soil temperature is. So I don't plant, I don't plant my pansies because it's October 15th. Uh, last year on October 15th, it was 90 some degrees. Uh, this year, it looks like it's going to be cool uh, and more, more normal uh, temperatures. But I do, again, super inexpensive little tool that I can go out there and go, hey, okay, the soil temperature's down to 65, time to plant the pansies. Otherwise, they stretch um, during the growing season. But I thought I'd point that out, and you'll see that in videos this week that, uh, that I'll be using this tool. And uh, I'll try to remember sometimes that there's some older videos on my channel that, uh, that a lot of you have, would, may, may not, probably haven't seen. Uh, just because there's so many of you are new to the channel. So again, thanks very much for participating in the channel. Uh, there'll be a plantsbymail.com giveaway announcement during the week. Um, and again, ask gardening questions down below that I'll answer for next Sunday. Thanks for watching.